bad. It's bad yeah. communication. No. And it's, it is, and it's disrespectful, isn't it? it seems like a typical mother-daughter argument. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a big concert at Adlai Stevenson Park. Uh-huh. Have you seen Wayne's World? Oh, this is an old movie. This is your era. It's just going to be a big party, you know? We've uh -huh. got some great bands coming. Uh-huh. Like Aerosmith. Uh-huh. He's not listening at all, Josh. Uh-huh. He's just saying, uh-huh. That's me and you. <laughs> I just want to remind everybody that there's still plenty of tickets left. Uh-huh. But that's no reason to wait till the last minute. Uh-huh. Well, they can tell he's not listening, by the way, what, like, what they're saying to him. They're basically just clowning him on radio, and he's just... Yeah, 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 acknowledging everything without even reprocessing really what they're saying. He's not active listening properly. You're not really listening to me, are you? Uh-huh. The eye contact, yeah, his body language wasn't all there. And that happens a lot of the times when we're trying to communicate. And this just makes it hard because they, you think that they understand what you're telling them and you go off and then you come back and still in the same, same position. What did you ask me? What do you Usually you're gonna play Xbox. And you forget it got one ear out the other. It's understandable that he's, yeah. he's got other things to do, but uh, that should take sort of a back step. Yeah, uh, he, his first priority should be talking to his guests and that's not right. just wandering off and doing his work. So a great tip um, would be to active listen and acknowledge acknowledge the um like for example you know um, these guys because all he was doing was just you know doing his own thing, not listening. So it felt like what they were trying to say and the communication that they were trying to put, put across was um, was not valid at all. Oh, I want a family, <laughs> I love this. She looks stressed, Josh. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having kind of a rough day. Yeah, I'm kind of having a rough day myself. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't look too stressed, Josh. Alex ripped Haley's favorite sweater and now I'm driving around from store to store trying to find the exact same one before Haley finds out. Just explain to her what happened. Uh-uh, Haley's not gonna understand. Sure she will. No, Phil, you don't understand. I'm trying to avoid this turning into a whole big thing. Then just get her something close. She'll never know the difference. So basically in this clip, in what a family, um, the main character, Phil, he's on a phone call with his wife. She says, I'm having a rough day and he's just kind of mimicking her, yeah, he's mocking, mocking her. her. All she wanted was um, one to listen and to understand the position she was in. Understand the pain. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. He was listening to her problems and trying to give her the right advice but wasn't as empathetic. He um, should already understand her and know her that the way that she is and not just go and give her the advice and say, no, do this or do that. It's more like, okay, just, just listen. She tells me she has a problem. I'm not supposed to help her? Not unless she asked for your help. But if she lets me help her, I can make her problem go away. She doesn't want you to solve her problems. She just wants you to give her support so that she can solve her problems herself. Sometimes she just wants a sympathetic ear. I should just say, I know. That's so frustrating. Yes! That's really? Yes. I usually talk to my mum, I ask for answers. I just kind of get actual answers, which is not what I want. I know it's pretty confusing, but I don't know, that's how my mind works sometimes. I just want her to be like, hey, you'll be fine, you can do this. And that's usually enough for me. This is Inside Out. Oh, oh I haven't seen it. I haven't seen this movie in ages. Yeah. We can fix this. We just need to get back to headquarters. Which way to the train station? I had a whole trip planned for us. Hey, who's ticklish, huh? Here comes the tickle monster! Can't she tell that he's sad? Hey, bing bong, look at this! So basically in this clip from Inside Out, um, the purple elephant bing bong, he's upset because he's met his host, the person they're minor in, is kind of forgetting about him. And he lost like the something that meant a lot to both of them. Indirectly what she was trying to do is make him block his emotion and just yeah. switch on to being cheerful. Uh, but I think in that situation, that wasn't really working for him. It's like saying to someone who's sad, oh, don't be sad, be happy. Like, it's, that doesn't work. You actually need someone to, like, help you out, you know? I'm sorry they took your rocket. They took something that you loved. It's gone. Forever. Sadness. Don't make him feel worse. Sorry. We were best friends. <laughs> yeah. It's sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay now. Come on, 
the train station is this way. She came and comforted the elephant and she was very, very nice to him. She was, she was talking gently and in a soft way. Uh, sadness, she became the opportunity for the elephant to, to be the outlet that he needed for, and I empathized and, and let him open up and let his emotion out. Yeah, I mean, I've been in uh, Bing Bong's position um, recently. I've been, I've been going through uh, an illness and, um, you know, so I was just feeling like sad and sorry for myself and people around me going, oh, it's okay, you know, even like at home, you know, Sebastian would be like, mom, it's fine, it's fine. And everyone's telling me, yeah, it's fine. They, it's, they, they see that I'm sometimes fine, but really inside you're not fine. And, um, you know, sometimes you just need to have that moment where you can, okay, feel sorry for yourself, have that moment. Because everyone around you is so positive um, to try and bring you up, but they're just not understanding what you're going through. Grandpa? Yeah. Am I pretty? Olive? You are the most beautiful girl in the whole world. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> that is nice. Yeah, you're just saying that? No, I'm not. I'm madly in love with you. And it's not because of your brains or your personality. It's because you're beautiful, inside and out. I don't want to be a loser. I'm not a loser. Where'd you get the idea you're a loser? Because Dad hates losers. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up a minute. You know what a loser is? A real loser is somebody that's so afraid of not winning, they don't even try. We're gonna have fun tomorrow, right? Yeah. Well, I think when a parent really just engages with you and genuinely listens, understands you, doesn't judge you, and it builds respect because you're both sharing that, what is the in there. Yeah. The approach was fantastic, like he came in, she asked the questions, he could see she was quite upset. And then, you know, through eye contact and reassurance, he, um, he really turned that conversation around. Um, I think it's important to um, ask questions when you're speaking to other people because you don't know what they're feeling at the moment. You know, some people don't open up in communication, so, you know, some people wear their heart on their sleeve and other people just really shut down. So if yeah. you can ask those the right questions, um, hopefully you can open up and you can understand what the problem is or what they're going through or what they're feeling and then it can be addressed. When you, need, when you show your like vulnerability and you show that like, hey, I'm not perfect either, it kind of makes the other person feel like, okay, it makes kind of like sense of unity, kind of. It's different from most of the girls I've been with. So call her up, Romeo. Why? So I can realise she's not that smart that she's and boring. You know, I mean, you don't... This girl's like perfect right now. I don't want to ruin that. Maybe you're perfect right now. Maybe you don't want to ruin that. Uh, at the start of the clip, Matt Damon, he's talking about how this girl he likes, he, she's perfect. And, and then the therapist, he's saying how he thinks that Matt Damon thinks he's perfect. My wife used to fart when she was nervous. She had all sorts of wonderful little ears and things. You know, she used to fart in her sleep. <laughs> I'm sorry I shared that with you. One night it was so loud it woke the dog up. <laughs> he made like he used comedy to kind of like break the ice, and make it more like more of a natural interaction, kind of. <laughs> oh Christ! <laughs> ah, but Will, she's been dead two years, and that's the shit I remember. <laughs> it's wonderful stuff, you know. Little things like that. Yeah, but those are the things I miss the most. People call these things imperfections but they're not. Oh, that's the good stuff. But uh, yeah, when he talks about his wife, the uh, character of Matt Damon, he, he opens up more easily. He's not just telling Matt Damon how to correct his ideology and, and what he's doing wrong. He's explaining, using his own life experiences, what he could do better. And um, what he said was that it's the, it's the little things, it's the imperfections. <laughs> ways that parents can make their own children feel judged is when they don't try to or they don't even like like even the littlest of effort to gain perspective on their level it's just going to make it worse because you're not actually listening or asking what actually has happened i wish i could live through something aren't you nope <laughs> <laughs>
Fine. Well, yours is the worst life of all, so you win. Oh, so now you're mad? No, it's because just you're I being ridiculous to to because music. you have a great life. I'm sorry, I'm not perfect. No one's asking you to be perfect. Just consider it. Would do. I don't even want to go to school in this state anyway. I hate California. Two different viewpoints here. Mm. It seems like a typical mother-daughter argument <laughs> in the car. An immaculate heart is already a luxury. Immaculate fart? You wanted that, not me. Miguel saw someone knifed in front of him at Sac High. Is that what you want? So you, you're telling me that you want to see somebody knifed he right in front of you? He barely right saw of... that. I want to go where culture is, but like New York. I raise such a or at least snob. Connecticut or New Hampshire, really, where writers live in the get woods. Get into those schools anyway. I felt like it was just kind of two different viewpoints and ideologies kind of clashing a bit. The daughter wants, wants to do something, yet the mother, you know, she knows best. So she thinks. Sometimes they need someone just to like be on their level and to the same wavelength. Otherwise, you're not going to get anywhere. I believe the daughter she wants to get she wants to get to places. The mother's almost suppressing all that she and is. not giving her the benefit of the doubt. Why don't we meet halfway and listen to what she's got to say, the the daughter, and not sort of. She, it almost seems like the mum's putting her down a little bit. Thank you.